Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Castellion, which I believe is the newest game in the Oniverse series from designer Shady Torbay. I'm not sure, it might be Sylvian was newer, but I think this is the most recently released game. And actually, for gentlemen, my money, it's probably our favorite of the series, and I'm going to do a two-player run-through of it today so you can see what it's all about. Now, like all game, Oniverse games, this is originally designed predominantly as a solo experience, but there are cooperative rules to play it as a two-player game, and that's what I'm going to show you today. And in this game, whether you're playing by yourself or with someone you love, you are trying to construct a defensive castle to save the kingdom from all manner of bad guys who are invading. Now, uh, this is not actually what the game looks like. I was actually just building some fake castles to get an idea for how much space I needed on the camera. But you might imagine that this could have been an example of two castles that two players were building. But at the beginning of the game, we haven't built our castles at all. And we've just got a big old pile of tiles, actually two piles of tiles that we can build from. But before we start building our defenses, we have to find out who the bad guys are. And now the interesting thing about Castellian, like all of the Oniverse games, there's a lot of different variants in this box. There's a lot of different ways you can play it. The first variant you have to decide on is whether you're going to play on easy, medium, or hard. Easy means you are playing against these bad guy cards. And I gotta say, thematically, this is so adorable. You'll notice that um, when you're playing on easy, you're not actually engaging in battle with the evil invaders. Instead, you're going to school to learn how to fight them. So all your targets that you have to worry about or your teacher teaching you, well, hey, you have to do this and you have to do this. And so this is the easiest version of the game where basically the standard construction rules for building your castle are in effect, but there are no special powers. Now, I'm not going to play the easy way today, so we'll leave these cards out. Then the medium difficulty is where instead of um, learning about how to fight in a school, you're doing war games, which represents this guy, a little puppet master, you know, uh, pretend attacking this you know, so it's kind of like your exams. So you're fighting off all these puppets in a series of war games. Now, the medium difficulty level still follows the same castle building rules, but it introduces the notion of special powers for the citizens that you put inside the castle. In the basic game, there are no special powers. <clears throat> In the medium game, there are special powers, and the targets you have to hit with these cards are a bit tougher. But I'm not playing medium difficulty today either. I'm playing full-on difficulty where the actual invaders are coming. You did all your training in the easier medium, now it's time for the real deal. And so, each one of these decks of difficulties, there's level 1s, 2s, and 3s, or the first, second, and third wave. Now what I gotta do to set up is, I am going to have to deal with one first wave, one second wave, and one third wave card. And so I'm just gonna shuffle up and pick one randomly, I have no idea what's coming. And then we'll do the same thing for the second wave of bad guys. And we'll say it's this one, and then the third wave. All right. Now, the first big difference between the different difficulty levels, besides the fact that you um, add all kinds of special powers. By the way, I should say, in the basic game, you have no special powers. In the medium game, you have special powers for the the citizens that you populate in your castle. For the advanced game, you actually have special powers for the citizens and for the way you build your castle, because you can build in different formations. So you've got double the number of special powers, um, which means you're more powerful. But on the flip side, the downside is we have no idea who's coming. There's these guys, these guys, and these guys. So it's very tough for us to prepare. Um, when you play at normal and medium, and you're laying out the three waves you're going to do, you actually get to see what they are. You can see that, oh, this is my first, second, and third. And you can plan ahead of time that to deal with this one, I have to build a tower and a, uh, a defensive line and a bastion, I think that's called. I have to build one of each of these um, before this first wave comes. You can see what's coming, but at the tough difficulty level, you have no idea. Although you do have some tricks up your sleeve. So that's the first element of variance. You have to decide which level you're playing at. I'm playing at the tough level. Next variant, you you have to decide if you're going to be playing with pantry tiles, which give you an extra objective. These purple tiles, you have to build these, and these kind of gum up your castle and, and make it less efficient as a defensive tool. So 
I am not playing with these today because quite frankly, that's just going to make the game tougher. So we're just going to leave this variant out. And then the last variant you can introduce is this guy, the, the Shadow. I think the Shadow Master or something like that. This nasty little bad guy who it's interesting. There are six different ways you could use this guy. Three of them make the game a little bit easier. Three of them make a little bit harder. So you have three different rules. One of them is, one of the ones that makes it harder is you have to build a prison around this guy. In addition to building your, your castle, you also have to build a separate prison. Another one is this guy can actually appear in your castle and haunt it and make things more difficult for you. Today, I'm going to be using him, and you don't have to use him at all. So there's seven ways you can play with him, really. The three ways to make it easier, three ways to make it harder, or just leave him out. I'm going to be playing with one of the ways to make him easier. He, uh, which is called the Oh, what? The premonition. Basically, when you're using the premonition variant, he just stays off to the side. And if ever I draw a bad tile, and there's, a, you know, there's, a bunch, there's like 12, I think, bad tiles in this deck. If I ever draw a bad one and I'm not prepared to deal with it, I can say, oh, that was a premonition. And that means I discard this and I discard that one bad tile. So it's a get out of jail free card. That's the variant I'm using for him. I'm playing the tough variant and I'm playing a two player game. So both Jen or myself and Jen were both building castles to prepare for these invaders. Right. Enough of all that. Let's actually start playing the game. Now, the game itself. Super simple, super elegant. I take a turn, Jen takes a turn, I take a turn, Jen takes a turn until either we win or we lose. I'll be the first player. So what do you do on your turn? You draw a tile to build your castle, and then you have a choice. You either um, apply it to your castle and start building, or you discard it to get the special power that that card gives. Now remember, you have no special powers in the easy version, but you do have special powers in the medium and hard version, which is the way I'm playing today. So let's see the first one I draw. I randomly got, oh my gosh, well, that's a bad start. This is one of the bad guys uh, with his little clock in his belly telling us that time is counting down. Now, when you draw a card, or a tile, you can either deal with it, use it, or discard it. Um, and now I can discard this, but to do it, I have to destroy four tiles from my castle. Now, this is actually good luck for me because I don't have any tiles in my castle yet, so I can discard this with no effect at all. So my first turn, that was actually lucky. I removed a bad guy from the game. You know, if I had already built three tiles worth of stuff, I would have to say, oh, you have to discard up to four. If I wanted to get rid of this, I would, boom, I'd have to get rid of all of them. I'd discard all of these. But as it is, since I haven't built anything yet, I get to discard this for free. Now, if I wasn't going to discard this, which I'm definitely going to do, instead, this is a timer. I put it over here on the first wave. And as you can see, once two timers have hit this wave, we're going to flip this card and find out what they do to us. All right. But as it is, I got kind of lucky. I'm going to say, discard this. Don't destroy any of my castle. And boom. So that was my first turn. Now it's Jen's first turn working on her castle. Okay. And she got a juggler. Now, the vast majority of these tiles are represented in rooms of three different shapes. Triangular rooms, circular rooms, and square rooms. And there's four different types of people that live in these rooms, either the jugglers, the seers, the chameleons, or the pyromaniacs, these four guys. Now, Jen can either use this tile to start building her defensive castle, or she could discard him to use his special power. Now, the special power of a juggler is to take your castle and shift two adjacent tiles. Since Jen has no adjacent tiles, she's going to start out by building. So she has now started to build the base of her castle. That was her turn. Now it is my turn. I'm going to draw another tile. And I also got, I'm going to do the same. Now it is Jen's turn. And you can see, turns go very quickly. Um, although, yeah, yeah. This is interesting. On a turn, I should have said, in, when you're playing solo, you have two choices. You can add this to your castle or you can discard it to use its special power. When you're playing cooperatively, there's a third option. I could instead donate this to Jen's castle, but to be able to do that, I would have to destroy a tile from my own castle. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any tiles to destroy, so I can't donate that right now. So, But now in the future, I can destroy a part of my castle to give Jen a tile. So now back over to her, and she drew a pyro. Now, 
So, she could discard this to use his power, which she doesn't want to use right now, because really, you use all these characters' powers to do a bunch of stuff once you've built your castle up a little bit. So Jen's just going to go on ahead and stall him. Now, Jen can either put him uh, to the left or the right and start expanding the base of her castle, or she can start building upwards um, and start building, uh, you know, vertically. Now, there are two things we have to worry about before this first thing reveals. When this is revealed, we both have to make sure we have a full base. If, if one or the other of us does not have a full base for our castle, we instantly lose. A base, uh, a castle, this is the maximum size, a castle can be up to six by six. Six to the base, six high. So. By the time this thing is revealed, when two bad guys get put on it, if both of us don't have a base of at least six wide, we instantly lose. So, instead of Jen starting to build upwards, she's going to build laterally to start working on her base. Now it's my turn again. I will grab another tile. And I've got another pyro. Now, now this gets a little more interesting. I can add to my base, or I could give this pyro to Jen, which means I would destroy my juggler, and he would go into the discard pile. Now, the reason I might want to do that is because if Jen took this, I don't think she would expand her base. She would put it on top and start building a tower. There are four different um, defensive structures you can build in your tower. Four of a kind, four people, four of the same type of creature in a vertical row, that is a tower. As soon as either Jen or I build a tower, the benefit of a tower is we can flip one of these to see what's coming so we can plan. So I am actually tempted to help Jen starting to build a tower, even though I'm sacrificing some of my own castle because we need to know what we're up against. Because, I mean, I'm, not only do we have to both have a base, there's some other requirement here and we don't know what it is. Um, but the, the tricky thing about building vertically, when you're building your base, you can put any tile next to any other tile. There are no restrictions whatsoever. But when you are not building in your base, there is a, there's a very important restriction. You can never put the same type of shape next to each other. So if Jen had this triangular room with a pyro guy in it, it would be illegal for her to put it here because you can't put a triangle next to a triangle. But you can put a triangle next to a circle. And if Jen does this, she's starting to build a tower that will let her find out um, for both of our sakes, what's in there. So I think instead of me, and now I could not build upwards and I wouldn't want to because I would not be building a tower that helps because you have to build, a tower has to be four of the same guy, not different guys like this. I could start building my base, but uh -uh. instead I am going to donate this to Jen, play it to her castle, which means I am sacrificing, I am destroying that juggler. Now he might come back later. He's in the discard pile right now. So, and then this, this is still my turn. I'm giving this to Jen. She will start building her tower. And that was my turn. Now it's her turn. So Jen's actually going to place two tiles in a row. And, oh my gosh, this is perfect. She got another pyro guy. So she will continue building upwards because she can put a square on top of a triangle without any restriction. Now she's got three of the four guys she needs to build a tower so we can see what our target is. Now it's my turn again. I'll go on ahead and grab this tile. And it's another bad guy. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Now... Although, this isn't bad because, hey, I've got nothing to lose. I've got no castle. So remember, if you want, you can discard a bad guy, but you have to destroy four of your tiles or as many as you've got. In this case, I've got nothing, so I'll just say goodbye to him. This is actually working very well. It would have really been terrible if Jen drew that bad guy. She would either have to destroy her whole castle or let the timer commence, which she would have done. But fortunately, I drew it. So that was my turn. Jen's turn again. Okay. So she's got this guy, and unfortunately, this would not, I mean, she could put this here because a triangle can go on top, can go orthogonally adjacent to a square, but this does not let her finish her tower. But what she will do is she'll put it over here, because remember, she needs to be working on her base also, because by the time this is revealed, we both have to have a base of six. So Jen has got half of her base, she's almost finished a tower. Now it's my turn. And, okay, now this is a chameleon, this adorable little guy. The special power of a chameleon, if I want, I can discard him and pull any other tile I want out of the discard pile because a chameleon can turn into other things. So if I want, I could discard him to get this juggler back. Um, and now that's interesting. If I, if I had the juggler and I had something to destroy, I'd give Jen the juggler and then she would almost have a defensive line. She would have four guys of the same uh, horizontally, which would give her another special power on top of that. But um, unfortunately, if I took this, I wouldn't be able to give it to Jen. So I'm just going to keep this guy. And hey, I've started to build a base to my tower again. Hooray. All right. Jen's turn. And 
okay, she's got a chameleon. And it would be good for Jen to give me this chameleon because I could start building a tower as well. Or I could build a defensive line. Or Jen could keep this for herself and continue to strengthen her base. Or, no, this is better. Jen's going to use the power of the chameleon to convert himself into something from the discard pile. So she's going to take this. So, so she discards this, car, this guy to use his power. His power is take something else from the discard pile. Boom. Jen now almost has completed a tower, and she has almost completed her base, and she has almost completed a line of defense. Her castle's looking very nice. Mine, not so much. Let's see what I get next. Okay. Oh, all right. Now, Jen wants this, because then she would have completed her line of defense. But I need to build a, ta a tower. This is kind of getting scary that I am not doing this. But you know what? What the heck? I'm going to sacrifice for Jen. I'm going to... I am going to... Um, donate this to Jen and build it here, which means I have to sacrifice another. And so, once again, I have no castle, but Jen's castle is looking really nice. So that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. Wow. Okay. So I'm kind of bummed I gave this to Jen because th she could have put this down here and finished her line of defense. But... So she can use this for something else, or she could destroy a tile of her own to give this to me so I can start working on my base. But you know what I think Jen's going to do? She's going to put this one, two, three, four, five. She's going to put it right there because she now has a full and complete base. I need to have a base as well before this first thing is... But we're, we're doing okay. So far, the two bad guys we found, it was lucky for us. I was able to discard them with no pain. Jen's got her base ready. Now, here's the thing. Jen could put this over here instead, but that means she would destroy her line of defense. A line of defense is four of the same guy in a, in a horizontal row. Um, if you have five... It's no longer a line of defense. If you have a guy like this, now the shape is like this, and it's nothing. It's um, you know, or this is nothing. Um, you, you might think, oh, hey, look, this is a tower, but it's not because you've got it's it's actually an L shape. So you have to be really careful about how you build stuff. So Jen's going to add this to her castle, but not over here because that would mess up her line of defense. Because five guys is not a line of defense. Four guys is. She's going to put it over there to finish her base. All right, and then she's still waiting for the pyro so we can see what our first target is. But anyway, back to me. Back to my turn, and I'll draw this one. Ah, the seer. Now, I could start building my base again, but I am instead going to discard this guy to use his special power. The special power of the seer is we draw randomly four tiles, and we could draw them from this pile or this pile. I haven't talked about this pile yet. Put them all face up. And these are the next four tiles we must draw. And we get to draw them, and we get to collude, Jen and I, knowing exactly what they are. So that was my turn. And so now Jen's going to take one, I'm going to take one, Jen's going to take one, I'm going to take one. We can't take anything else until these four are gone. And this lets us plan effectively. And so this is perfect for Jen. She's going to go on ahead and take this one. She, she doesn't want to take this pyro because she can't put a square on top of a square. She's going to take this one. And boom, she has completed a tower. Four of the same guy in a column. And again, you know, if there were a, another guy right here, this would not be a tower because it would be some kind of weird whatever shape that is, but it's a tower. So now Jen can pick to reveal the first, second, or third wave. I think we're going to reveal the first wave and find out what it is. It's a bunch of these little green guys coming. So here's what we know. We need to... By the time these guys show up, both of us have to have a complete base. Jen does. I do not. And one of us, whichever one is going to defend against these guys, has to have two completed lines of defense. Now, Jen's got one. So I think it's incumbent on us for Jen to start building a second line of defense. Whereas me, I'll probably... I just need to focus on getting my base built. Whereas Jen needs a second line of defense. Okay. So that was pretty good. That was my turn. I used special power. Uh, oh, no. And then Jen took one. She used a tower. Now it's my turn again. I got to take one of these three. And I think I'll go on ahead and take this pyro guy because Jen doesn't need another pyro guy. She needs to start building a second line of defense. So, I'll, hey, I've started working on my base again. Let's slide Jen's over a little bit so I got room for mine. And I'm not using his power. I'm just using it. Now it's Jen's turn again. So she will take this chameleon and oh, this uh, chameleon, put it here because a circle, it's totally legal for it to go next to triangles. And so what Jen's planning on doing is making a line of defense of chameleons as well. So she's got the two lines of defense we need to protect ourselves. So that was Jen's turn. Now it's my turn. And I don't want to take this. 
So, once again, in the interest of sacrificing for Jen, I am going to blow up my castle to give this to Jen. All right. And so that was my turn. Now it's her turn again. And uh, the seer's work is done. Now we're drawing blind again. Now, if we're ever in a situation where we're a little bit nervous, because maybe we've already put one timer on here, and we know if we draw another timer, boom, it's going to happen and we're not ready. We can, instead of drawing from this pile, we can always draw from this pile. The you know, this has the same types of tiles as here. The only difference is there are no bad guys. There are no countdown timers in this tile. So it's always safe to draw from the safe pile, but this is a limited resource, so you have to use it sparingly. So anyway, so I sacrificed once again to give to Jen. So now it is her turn, and all right, she's got a pyro, which doesn't really help her that much. So what I think she's going to do is she's going to give that to me and sacrifice this dude who uh, is completing her base but really isn't adding anything else. And I need to start building my base. So, uh, or should I not? Because Jen, what could she do? Well, she doesn't want to put this over here because then that messes up her tower. Although interestingly, she doesn't need a tower. We know it's okay if she messes up her tower. Um... Because we know we need more lines of defense. That, or or she, she could put this over here. But again, that would mess up the tower she's already had. But here's the thing. The second one, this might say, we need a tower. Um, so, it might not. This one might say we need a tower. So, we don't necessarily want to ruin Jen's tower. So, I think Jen's going to destroy one of her tiles and put it over here in the discard pile to give this to me. Alright, so that was Jen's turn. Now it's my turn. And I got another pyro. Awesome. Well, do I want to start building a tower of my own? Because if I get a tower built, we can find out what the next one or the final result is. Or do I keep building my base? Because, I mean, so far we've been really lucky on time. Nothing's been bothering us, but I do need to get my base built. You know what? I think I will go this way and build a line of defense. Because, heck, who knows? Maybe I'll finish two lines of defense before Jen does. So, um, that's what I've drawn. Now it's Jen's turn again. And, oh, yeah! She got another chameleon. This is perfect because I can go next to these triangles. She's almost finished her second line of defense. My turn. And, um, oh, a chameleon. I don't want to. But oh, see, I, even if I could give it to Jen, it wouldn't help because you can't put a square next to a square. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this. I'm going to discard this chameleon to use his power to get this pyro and put him in place. So I am building a line of defense myself. All right. So that was my turn. Jen's turn. A seer. She'll go on ahead and discard him. A seer in a triangular room. She'll discard him to um, draw four more so we can see the future. One, two, three, four. Okay. So that was Jen's turn. And now we can make targeted draws. Although there's no pyros here, which is what I would like to draw. Oh, but Jen wants this because then she'll have finished her second thing. So I just got to draw something and finish my base. I need to get my base going. What the heck? I'll go on ahead and take um, this guy and put him right here. So that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn. Boom. She has finished. So Jen, hold on, hold on. There's no boom. There's no boom. I just realized I've been uh, playing a lie this whole time. So let's go on ahead and put this guy back because, I'm sure Apollo noted this, hey, I could never have put this guy here because he's next to another triangle. Remember, you can only do adjacent shapes on the ground floor. So this was never legal. Now, let's just roll back the clock and say I had the presence of mind not to make that mistake. And that at that, you know, a few minutes ago when I did this, I had just put him right here. Because that would have been totally legal. Then I just continued. And so, right, I don't quite have. And my problem is, hey, this is still great. I can't put this here because it's still not legal. So I've got a bit of a pickle there. But, hmm, there is a way out of this conundrum. And I think I'm going to take this anyway. And I'm actually going to put it on over here. And hey, look at that. I've created a base again. Although, I'm not planning on keeping this here because there are some tricks you can do to move tiles from one space to another. So I'm just going to grab this so I have it in position. What I'm going to need later on is I'm going to have to find a pyro. Uh, so far, I haven't used the pyro special power. Their power is they blow stuff up and then they move other stuff. So if I get a pyro, I'll be able to move this into position and ignore the shape restriction. All right, so anyway. So, uh, I'm taking that now, or Jen's taking that, so it's my turn again. And I'll go on ahead and grab this, so I'm getting ever closer to having my completed base. And now it's Jen's turn again. 
And, well, she doesn't need this, so I think she's going to turn this in to draw four more. And fingers crossed, I need to see some pyro. Now, so far, I have only been drawing from the main pile. The safe pile means there are no traders, there are no bad guys in here. So maybe I want to, you know, uh, so far I haven't drawn any yet, though, so we're kind of safe. What the heck, let's go 50 50. I will draw one, two. Oh, yeah, baby. Burn, baby, burn. We got some pyromaniacs. Oh, wow. And another pyromaniac. So I'm just drawing two from each. Whoa. Okay. When it rains, it pours. So that was my turn. I didn't, I discarded. So now, or I'm sorry, that was Jen's turn. Now it's my turn again. And, well, I'm inclined to go on ahead and finish my base. Well, another nice thing, too, is I just realized I could actually start building my own tower. Although this, unfortunately, kind of prevents this from being a tower. Hmm, let's just go ahead and get that base finished. So I'm all about that base. All right, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And now it's Jen's turn. She is going to take, and she could take any of these because she's not going to place these pyros. She's going to use them. She will go on ahead and take the square one. Now, instead of placing this, she is going to use it, which means it blows up real good, and Jen activates the pyro power. Now, there's two steps in the pyro power. First, you have to destroy one tile from anywhere in your little defensive castle. And, hmm, what the heck, I'll, just for fun, I'll go on ahead and destroy this pyro. So this gets discarded as well, and everything else slides down like Tetris. Boom. And after the pyro has destroyed something, you can then take another tile from anywhere in your castle, pick it up, and put it wherever you like, ignoring the shape restriction. And now, boom, I have my uh, hands of blue two by two. We are ready to go. We're ready to face that. And we have been able to break the rules legitimately that time instead of earlier when I broke the rules incorrectly. So that's pretty cool. Now it is my turn again. And... Well, heck, there's some more pyros. I don't really want to blow anything up, but you know what would actually be pretty cool? I could start building a... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take that. And, and you can tell this is one of the safe tiles because it has the blue on it. And so maybe I'll start working on a tower as well. Or heck, maybe... Actually, oh wait, no, if I put this here, then if I were to grab this, I could make a bastion, which is a two by two, which actually protects me from, well, various and sundry things. But but it doesn't matter because I'm going to have to take this and now Jen's going to have to take this. She's going to have to put it someplace and hey, how about this? Jen will put it and she just completed her tower again. Once again, when you complete a tower, you get to take a looky-loo. We're going to see what's coming up in the future. Oh, it's another horde and that is actually, well, that's pretty lucky. In the first horde, we have to have um, two walls. For the second one, we have to have three. So that's actually pretty cool. That's actually really nice. Okay, so that was my or Jen's turn. Now it's my turn again. And um, let's see. Let's just go ahead and start drawing. And oh, okay. Now, so far, I've been lucky. Every time I've drawn one of these, I had an empty castle. So I could just discard them. Now, I could get rid of this. But remember, I have to get rid of four of my tiles. I do not want to get rid of four of my tiles. So I think the time has started to tick. So... Uh, that was my turn. And one more, and we are going to be hit. Although, again, we're prepared. Oh, wait, no. Hold on a second. We are not prepared. I've got my base. Jen's got her churros, but she doesn't have a base. we got to get Jen's base back. You know what? I'm not going to draw from here. I want to take a chance. I'm just going to draw a safe zone. And it's a juggler. Okay. So let's go ahead and put him right there. Actually, should we put him? Yeah. We'll put him right here, because if we put him over here, then Jen would um, have a five line, and she wouldn't have her defense. Cool. So, now it is my turn again. We'll go back to drawing dangerously. And, ooh, it's a sage, I think. What the heck? I'll go on ahead. Let's just, uh, let's look into our future. Let's take a couple of dangerous ones. And there's another sage, and another juggler. And, okay, we've been pretty safe so far. And, um, well, okay, what the heck? Ooh, all right. So, there we go. Um, wow. I've, I've just been incredibly lucky so far to have been avoiding these issues. So anyway, so that was that. Now it's Jen's turn again. Now we know she needs to start building a third row. So maybe she should start doing that. Although, right, so she could put, you know, she could put jugglers up here. And there is a juggler if she wants to start building a third row. So that's actually pretty cool. Let's go ahead and have her do that. Now, this um, can't go here because it's next to a circle, but it could go here because it's next to a triangle. That's fine. That means we could put a square here and a triangle here and then another circle here. So, all right, so Jen's starting to build her next row. Okay, back to me. Now, this is... 
Oh, this is an interesting problem though. Because here's the thing. When we eventually face this issue, Jen is going to be the one to defeat it because she's the one who's actually hit the, the goal we need. That means she will get the Defender. Where is it? There's a card. The Defender of the Realm card. And what that means is, whoever is holding this, the other player has to be the one to defeat the next obstacle. So, you know, if Jen, you know, has these two lines and defeats that, then she gets this. I have to have three lines. Now, there's a way you can transfer this from one player to another. The player who has this can blow up six tiles, which is a big thing to transfer it to somebody else. But I think that's what's going to happen in this game because Jen's already on her way to her third level. All right. So anyway, um, but we haven't gotten that yet. So, um, hmm. So that's the kind of stuff we need to be thinking about. So Jen's taking that, so I'm going to take one of these. Ah, uh, hmm. <clears throat> I'm kind of tempted to take this and convert this guy into a, a, a round pyro. Right. And by the way, I don't I think I mentioned this earlier, but when you're converting, you know, this green guy could turn into any other type of defender, but the room doesn't change. So I can only convert a round room for another round room. So that's what I'm doing. All right. And I'm going to put this over here. And now I have created a little two by two, uh, a bastion, which could help in the future as well. Uh, it has a certain power. So now it's Jen's turn again. And let's see here. So she needs more jugglers. She'd like to use this, but there's no triangular juggler. So she can't use this to pull this out, unfortunately. Um, but, let's see. So it is a triangle. She could use this to get uh, another seer out. So we could get a couple of seers. So we could ha have a whole bunch more. Or, you know what? She could just go ahead and take this, use this. What the heck? She's going to use this, discard it, to draw three more tiles. To fill back up to four. And she'll take a dangerous one. Okay, let's take a safe one and another dangerous one. Yeah, okay, another dangerous one. All right, okay. So here's the situation. This has shown up. Now, once you got guys out here, you have to use these. You can't just draw a blind when things are out here. And this is a bad guy. So we know this bad guy is going to hit us now. Uh, and, you know, we could do it right away because uh, we're prepared. Or we could, you know, I mean, we, we'd have like three more draws before we have to deal with this. But um, that's pretty cool. So we know this is going to happen. We, and now also the interesting thing is you could go on ahead and face the first horde anytime you want. You don't have to wait for the timer to go. But it's generally good to wait so that you can get more of these timers out of the game. Because once it's gone, those timers are gone. But anyway, you know what? I still, we're in a really, really good situation. I don't want to jinx this or anything, folks, but I'm kind of feeling we might have a chance of winning this. So if you'd like to find out if that's the case, why don't you go ahead and hit the I in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, and we'll, we'll see what we'll see. We'll find out what the third wave is. Um, we're already on our way to preparing for the second wave. And um, alternatively, you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.